Hello, my name is Hector Velasquez and welcome to another episode of GCSAA Inside the Shop. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about hydraulic systems. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the hydraulic cylinder. Now with us in this episode, we have two technicians that are going to be sharing with us their tips and tricks on how they go about to troubleshoot their hydraulic systems and how do they go about rebuilding their hydraulic cylinders. Now, without further ado, let's get started. We have a lot to cover. This is Dustin Prescott at Kenosha Country Club in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I'm the equipment manager here. Hey there, Hector. Chris Hyman here, equipment manager at Cobblestone Creek Country Club out in Victor, New York. Uh, we're just outside of the Rochester, New York area. All right, so most hydraulic systems are going to be comprised of a hydraulic tank, a hydraulic motor with a manual valve or electric valve. And in this case, we have a cylinder that's being activated. It's a log splitter, so it's going to have all your basic components that a hydraulic system would have. Now, we're going to be focusing on the double acting cylinder. A double acting cylinder is a type of hydraulic actuator used in various applications to create linear motion. It is called double acting because it can generate force and motion in both directions, extending and retracting. Unlike a single acting cylinder that can only produce force in one direction, such as a floor jack. So guys, really cool question is, how do you go about troubleshooting your hydraulic systems? What is your approach? What, how, how do you get started? One of the main things I do when I'm troubleshooting a hydraulic issue is I immediately start looking for any sort of leaks, you know, any signs of fluid, because uh, that's going to be your first telltale sign. Um, with lift cylinders, if you come in in the morning and you have a reel or a deck or something that's lowered down to the ground or on its, its catcher, or whatever the case might be, that's going to be another good sign. Um, lift cylinders, to me, tend to be a little bit easier to figure out because you're either going to see that leakage or the, the weeping, um, as I call it, the drift, some people call it as well. It gets tricky. Got to get that schematic out. And if you're having trouble, you got to make sure you put in some calls. You know, your post distributors are, are willing to help you. They're very busy too. So a quick phone call is a lot easier than picking up a machine and and, and it being down for several weeks. And uh, I guess that's kind of where I start. All right, so some of the troubleshooting things that I do, first thing is the obvious. What is it supposed to do? If an external issue, pretty straightforward. Um, I got a sample here. There's an external issue right here where the seal's blown right out and it's leaking all over. I look at the obvious of what's going on, kind of step back, try not to dig in too deep too quick. I look at schematics. What is the flow going to that cylinder and how should it operate? Um, and then just follow the flow and see if, you know, if you are chasing a cylinder or if you're chasing a valve. Guys, what are, what are some of the approach that you take when it comes time to whether you want to rebuild or replace your hydraulic cylinder? First steps I'm going to take when I'm even determining if I want to rebuild something, um, especially with the hydraulics, the components usually aren't bad. It's more than likely just seals, O-rings, and things like that that are more often than not, the rebuild's cheaper. So I always try to rebuild first if it's possible. Now, when you get into these cylinders, they're not easy. Uh, it, it, it's hard to get, get them apart for one. So I always take as many steps as I can to protect the cylinder, wrapping rags or towels around them when I put them in the vise, making sure I'm putting them in the vise in the right manner so that I'm not crushing the cylinder itself. And, and you know, you don't want to do more damage than good when you're rebuilding something. So when you go about rebuilding your hydraulic cylinders, what are some of the tools that you guys use to remove that gland nut? and maybe some of these O-rings, because they can be a little tough and difficult, especially the uh, the gland se nut seal inside. That can be a little tricky to get in there. Tools that I have, I have a spanner right here. This is, you can get it at Home Depot, that's where I got it. This is meant for your hand grinder. So you can adjust it, snug it down, and that really works good for your, for your top-mounted cylinders like this. I don't know if you can see it where it's got the holes, kind of getting glare. But anyway, it has the holes on top. Here's a couple wrenches that I modified. These were originally adjusters for a John Deere TX Turf Gator. And this one works really good. I don't know if you can see the tip. Works really good on the jakes. And then this one I ground to kind of fit the Toros um, when they're on the side. Toros seem to have this type of setup. That's what I got here, is they have these tabs on the side. 
and these their retainer rings inside. And on one side, you'll see it kind of hooked in. I don't know if it's a good light, but on the other side, you're gonna get on that and you're gonna get a screwdriver in there, pry that out. Once you get it out, let it follow the cylinder to keep that curve. Our seal kits don't come with that retainer ring. Um, these particular cylinders, it's they're challenging because you have an aluminum cap with a steel body and you have a steel retainer ring. Okay, so now here's that same hydraulic cylinder that Chris was showing us. As you can see, this gland nut, I completely destroyed. So in this case, I would have to replace the cylinder. But for this purpose, we're just going to remove this gland seal and there it went. So that's why we always wear safety glasses, right? All right. Now these seals, to replace them, can be a little bit cumbersome. Now these seals are very, very durable. Now here's a real quick and easy way to get this seal back on that gland nut. It's gonna take a couple small zip ties. I'm gonna fold this seal in half. I'm gonna zip that down. You don't want it too tight. We don't wanna crush the seal. We just wanna hold it in place. Then we're gonna grab another zip tie and I'm gonna run it through the one loop. Swing it around through the other loop and then we're gonna fold the seal in half again and zip that down. Just a real quick, easy way to do this. And you should have something that looks like this. Now what we did is we compressed the seal small enough to where we can just very quickly pop right in there, just like that. And now all we have to do is just cut away the zip ties. Now you want to be very careful not to cut your seal. That would not be good. <laughs> all right, so we're getting the zip ties out of the way. Very carefully. And then you'll have something left that looks like this. And just quickly grab a flathead screwdriver or something and just pop that into place. And this is a real quick, easy way to replace that gland nut seal. And the rest is pretty straightforward. Well, as you can see, troubleshooting a hydraulic system doesn't have to be so daunting. Maybe a few phone calls to a couple of your peers can help you going in the right direction. I want to thank Chris and Justin for making this guest appearance on our episode and sharing your ideas and your tips and tricks on how you go about troubleshooting your system. I want to thank you for joining me here today on GCSAA Inside the Shop, where we're helping technicians one wrench at a time.